Hi guys, welcome back to my blog. So for the second post that I did for week seven, um, at first I tried to understand what MPEs were, kind of lay a good foundation down. Um, and as I was continuing to do my research, I noticed that there was a lot of controversy surrounding non-practicing entities, um, specifically that there were a lot of negative comments and ideas about these kind of companies. And so I wanted to research that a little further and really understand that. So um, when I was reading it so that you could kind of look at these companies in two ways. You could look that they are very aggressive, kind of tearing down other companies, um, limiting competition and things like that. Or at the same time, are they helping inventors get their fair share um, of what they deserve since they invented these? So it really just depends on how you look at it. Um, however, in this blog post, I kind of focused um, more on the side of that they are aggressively going after other companies. So um, in my blog, I talked about a few reasons as to why there was a lot of controversy surrounding the non-practicing entities, and I'm going to discuss a few. Um, so the first one is that a lot of critics said that they feel that the NPEs could potentially misuse the patent system, which would demotivate inventors from continuing their innovation um, if there were always these uh, companies coming after them and really tearing them down. Because obviously with practicing entities, through their own research and development, they come up with these patents, whereas with non-practicing entities, they just go and acquire them. So there's thought that with these NPEs, they cause a lot of challenges when it comes to litigation. Is it then going to be worth it to continue to innovate if their companies for the practicing entities are always being teared down? So that's a point of controversy there and a reason why um, NPEs are not necessarily the best thing. Um, another thing is that it says that they diminish competition, which I found to be a very interesting point of view. And this is because they hold on to those patents, but they aren't actually creating anything. And because they're not actually creating anything, um, there's obviously less products and services, less competition, which, you know, just through regular economics uh, will cause uh, prices to rise, which, you know, obviously negatively affects the consumer as well. So that's another point of controversy. Um, another one is that NPEs claim that, you know, they're giving their fair share to the inventors and they want to get the inventors in on all the action. However, oftentimes what happens is NPE go NPEs go through these huge settlements and then the inventors actually only get a very small part where the company actually profits a lot from this. So that's very interesting. Um, I think that also one thing that I found very interesting when I was researching is that um, in cases where the NPE is going to sue another company, defendants can't um, like counter sue them or come up with a counterclaim, which makes them the NPEs immune to any sort of um, like infringement claim litigation, which just seems very, uh, I don't know, I guess for me, it just seems like kind of unfair in ways, which I can then from see from that point of view why people are not really that big of fans of non-practicing entities. Um, I think just, um, you can obviously read it on my blog, the other um, reasons, I have a total of eight, but those are just a few I wanted to talk about. Um, something else I want to talk about in this video as well is um, a specific case against uh, NPE and a practicing entity. So it was against NTP and Research in Motion, and essentially NTP uh, filed a lawsuit against them. Um, patent infringement, and it eventually ended in a settlement of $612.5 million. Um, however, when they were actually investigating this, they kind of started to notice that a lot of NTPs, which is a non-practicing entities, um, patents were actually not even valid, and they actually invalidated a lot of them. However, Research in Motion still went through a settlement because they felt a lot of pressure from their investors and their customers because they didn't think that they could um, withstand actually going through litigation and fighting it, which just land them into a settlement. So I think from this one example, it's a good case of just understanding the power that NPEs have and in some ways how it can really negatively um, affect companies. Um, but I appreciate you watching my video. I hope that you found my blog post helpful or interesting in any way. And I would love to hear what you guys really think about this issue. If you think that NPEs actually are very helpful to inventors or if maybe you have a similar viewpoint as I do and as I discussed in this video. Um, but anyways, thank you so much for watching and have a good night!